Rebels, the story you are about to hear takes place more than 3,500 years ago. It's a story that hasn't been heard in a long time because for centuries, people tried to prevent it from ever being told. This is a story about a passion, dedication, and true rebelhood. This is the story of Hatshepsut. On a blazing hot day in the throne room of a great Egyptian palace, a young Hatshepsut knelt before a hushed crowd. It was coronation day, which meant that soon the kingdoms of Egypt would have a new pharaoh to rule over the entire country. Hatshepsut wore a gown of gold silk, and from her neck and ears hung stunning jewels of beautiful teal blue turquoise and deep red garnet. Royals and dignitaries all gathered in the throne room to watch as a spectacular headdress adorned with gold and precious gemstones was blazed on Hatshepsut's head. Once crowned, the soon-to-be pharaoh was led to a grand throne at the front of the room. There, the high priests approached and announced the new pharaoh's coronation names, Mat Kara Hatshepsut. 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 Echoed back the now kneeling crowd. To make the coronation official, Hatshepsut had to complete a series of traditional cleansing rituals, like bathing in a special pool and being dressed in new royal clothes as Egypt's almighty ruler. Rebels, it's hard to say exactly how the coronation of the great pharaoh Hatshepsut unfolded, because the only evidence we have of this day is from hieroglyphics, which are drawings carved into the ancient stones of Egypt's wall. And the hieroglyphics from Hatshepsut's coronation were scratched over and vandalized by later kings who wanted to prevent the story of the great pharaoh Hatshepsut from ever being told. For thousands of years, Hatshepsut's image was wrecked, and Hatshepsut's name was erased from almost all history records. But why? Why would they want to keep Hatshepsut hidden? Because, you see, rebels, unlike most of the pharaohs throughout Egypt's history, Hatshepsut was a girl. That's right. In an age when women were not supposed to hold powerful positions or be mighty rulers, Hatshepsut did both. She was the second woman pharaoh in history, and she led Egypt into a golden age of prosperity in true rebel fashion. To understand how Hatshepsut got to this momentous day, let's go back a few years to about 1508 BCE, when King Thotmos I and his wife, Ahmos, welcomed the baby Hatshepsut into the world. As a young princess growing up in the palace, Hatshepsut watched as her father, the pharaoh, ruled over a land that stretched as far as the desert sun. She often joined her father in meetings with community leaders, powerful dignitaries, and even in military strategy sessions. Hatshepsut was incredibly smart and a very quick learner. At the age of eight, her father began including her in his business plans, and soon after, she was given a very special Egyptian title. It seemed clear that the young princess was destined for greatness. Even her name echoed like a prophecy. You see, Hatshepsut means for most of noble women. Hatshepsut married a young prince named Thotmos II, 
and stood by his side as he was named the pharaoh and ruled over the empire she had grown up watching and helping her father manage. Together, the couple had one daughter, Nefirura, but no sons. Back then, having a son was very important to rulers because traditionally, only males could assume the throne, thus ensuring that the current reigning family remained in power of another generation. Unfortunately, Tahotmus II died young and without a male heir to the throne. Hatshepsut and her daughter were in a vulnerable position. As females, neither of them could assume the throne, leaving them at the mercy of the next in line. Hatshepsut found out that the next Egyptian pharaoh was going to be Tahotmus III, her stepson. There was just one problem. Tahotmus III was just two years old. He could barely walk, let alone rule an entire kingdom alone. So Hatshepsut had herself named Regent. This meant that until Tahotmus III was old enough to rule on his own, Hatshepsut would help make decisions on his behalf. She was 29 years old. And Hatshepsut knew she could handle the job. For seven years, she served as regent, conducting royal business and holding Tahotmus III's place in line. She made sure that he was educated and prepared for all tasks and responsibilities of a future king. When Tahotmus III became of age and was ready to rule, it was understood that he would take over. Unless Hatshepsut found a way to hold on to her power and the throne. Hatshepsut loved her country and its people. She knew she was the right person to lead. And it wasn't fair that just because she was a girl, she couldn't become pharaoh. So Hatshepsut hatched a plan. She would disguise herself as a man. Which brings us back to Coronation Day. Some historians say that Hatshepsut even wore a beard as the royal crown was placed upon her head. She was determined to prove that her gender had nothing to do with her abilities. She had so many bold ideas about how to make Egypt prosperous and powerful. She believed in herself and her abilities as a world leader. After her coronation, Hatshepsut told people that her father, the former king Tahotmus I, had originally appointed her as his successor. She also claimed that one of the gods was her real father. Surely no one could argue with the will of the gods. After becoming a pharaoh, Hatshepsut set herself apart from the traditional image of an Egyptian female. She renounced all of the titles usually reserved for women and often dressed in clothes fit for a king. She ordered that statues of her include a bird so that no one would doubt her legitimacy. And she worked tirelessly to help improve life for the people of Egypt. More than just making her country forget that she was a woman, Hatshepsut knew she had to do an outstanding job to keep potential challengers away from the throne. To expand the economy, Hatshepsut developed the new trade routes. She established a special envoy to the land of Bund, a major trading center on the East African coast. There, in exchange for Egyptian linen, papyrus, and grain, the envoy was able to bring foreign epony, obsidian, myrrh, frankincense, and even live trees back to Egypt. This was so exciting. 
life trees had never been transported before. Under her rule, Egyptian trading ships were full of wondrous smells, blooming branches, and the promise of an exciting new era. And over the years, Bant became one of Egypt's most significant trading partners, all thanks to Hatshepsut. She also rebuilt all the monuments and constructed new ones, like Deir el-Bahari, proving that Egypt was in a golden age of wealth and prosperity. Hatshepsut ruled for almost 21 years and became so popular among the Egyptian people that although he was old enough to take over years before her death, Tahotmos III didn't take the throne until after Hatshepsut died of natural causes. He certainly could have tried to overthrow her if he wanted to, since Tahotmos III was in charge of military. But it seems like he trusted and respected her for the great ruler she was proving herself to be. At least that's how it seemed while Hatshepsut was alive. So, why did Tahutmus III order Hatshepsut's memory to be erased? This is a mystery we are still trying to unravel. Hatshepsut was his stepmother, his regent, and his role model. If he truly hated her, he could have tried to overthrow her power. If he was better, he could have destroyed her images and records as soon as she died. But instead, Tahutmus III waited until he was near the end of his own life to give the order. He commanded that all hieroglyphic records of Hatshepsut's reign be defaced and destroyed. Was it just because Hatshepsut was a woman? Rebels, this question has challenged many archaeologists historians, and experts. In 1902, an ancient burial temple was uncovered. Finally, they would find the answers. The descent to Hatshepsut's tomb was so dangerous. As the expedition made its way under the mountain, sunlight and oxygen became scarce. But nothing could deter the archaeologists who were hungry to know the truth. Down, down, down they went into an elaborate web of maze-like burial chambers, which held great spiritual and cultural significance to rulers of ancient Egypt. With only flashlights to guide them, the archaeologists advanced into the tomb on shaky legs until finally their feet touched the solid ground of Hatshepsut's burial temple 35 stories below the earth. This was the deepest tomb ever uncovered in Egypt, maybe even the world. But once the researchers made it all the way inside, they discovered that Hatshepsut's mummy was missing. They also found entire pits full of broken statues of Hatshepsut and dozens of hieroglyphics where her face had been scratched out as though someone was trying to erase her existence. Experts now believe that Thotmos III did this to ensure that when he died, his son was crowned pharaoh instead of Hatshepsut's daughter. After all, if there was evidence that a female could be a great leader, maybe the trend would continue. Of course, we will likely never know for certain, but there is some good news to this tale. Hatshepsut's mummy has been found and slowly but surely 
his statues and images are being pieced back together. Her name is being restored to history books. And there are many museums that display pictures and statues of her. Her story doesn't end there. Really, it's just the beginning. Because it's up to every one of us to keep Hatshepsut's name alive and to celebrate all that she achieved as a pharaoh, as a daring leader, and of course, as a rebel. This podcast is a production of Rebel Girls. It's based on the book series, Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. The story was produced by Olivia Richard with sound design and mixing by Mumble Media. It was written by Mary Bergstrom and Olivia Richard and edited by Abby Schur. Fact-checking by Joe Radigan. Narration by Noor Alam. Original theme music was composed and performed by Electra Barjaki. Thank you to the whole Rebel Girls team who make this podcast possible. Stay Rebel.